remember a job is just to make ends meet. You don't have to love your job. This is huge. I know you're new here. But one of the things I try to explain to the men is you don't have to be passionate about everything you do. Not everything that you do has to feel good. Not everything you do has to be, you have to be passionate about. Sometimes you do shit just because you need to do shit. Sometimes you get a job just because you need to work, right? And you don't do it begrudgingly, right? Just because you don't have feels about the job don't mean you scorn it. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, as you know, I am a musician. Due to coronavirus restriction gigs this fall and winter were scarce, right? People aren't getting together. But looking for the spring and summer season has begun. I work a part-time job at a sensory deprivation tank facility. I love this job a lot. I'm passionate about what we do and gives me flexibility to gig and build my music platform career. Problem now is without gigging, I can't meet my survival needs. I'm making $12 an hour. I'm getting 25 hours a week at best. An opportunity has risen and I have a chance to work a retail job. Retail work has never made me passionate. I will have less flexibility with this job, but it gives me 45 hours a week at $12 an hour. Do I take this job just to bridge the gap until the gigging season begins, only to quit and move to part-time once I can live off music and gigs? Or do I continue the job I have now, use the flexibility to my advantage and build revenue from other music endeavors? Any thoughts? So Devin, um, you finished up by saying, do I stay with this job because it has flexibility and it will give me the time to build my other uh, revenue from music endeavors. But you don't have that yet. You don't have other uh, music endeavors yet. And I don't think you want to, I don't think you want to put your time and energy into that. Not to say that that's a bad route, but you are on your path to being a amazing musician, you know, gigging and then recording and you got your album and all the great things you're doing. Um, when you're on a path like that, when you're on a creative path like that, the best thing to do is to work a job that helps you survive, not a job that you, quote unquote, are passionate about, right? Because all your passion really just needs to go into your creative work. So my opinion is like, you're not going to be a flotation expert, right? Maybe you like it. It's flexible, but you know what you do need? You need, do need the money to make ends meet, right? You need the few extra hours. They can't give it to you. You might not, you might like the place you're working and you might not love retail, but, but remember a job is just to make ends meet. You don't have to love your job. This is huge. I know you're new here, but one of the things I try to explain to the men is you don't have to be passionate about everything you do. Not everything that you do has to feel good. Not everything you do has to be, you have to be passionate about. Sometimes you do shit just because you need to do shit. Sometimes you get a job just because you need to work, right? And you don't do it begrudgingly, right? Just because you don't have feels about the job don't mean you scorn it. You do the job because why? Money. Don't scorn money either. Recognize. And I know artists like to do this, like to think that they don't need money. And that's why they end up starving artists. Make the money you need to make to live the life you need to live so that you have the creative energy to create your projects, to make your money, to do the thing that you really need to do, really want to do. And so my opinion is if you have an opportunity to work more hours at a different job and make more money uh, while you're waiting for the gigging season to come, then do that. That's being offered to you. Remember I spoke earlier to, uh, I spoke about opportunities to spend, about being presented to you. A lot of times, uh, God just offers you the, the right thing and you just got to take it because it's on the table without thinking. And I think this is, this is one of these. You got to just take it. It's on the table. There's this old story. I don't know how old the story is, but I remember people were talking about it when Hurricane Katrina came. <laughs> and uh, the story goes like this, that people in this one town was getting flooded, right? The dams broke and the, and the city was flooding and it was raising up. And the guy, this guy was in his house. And he's like, I ain't leaving. 
God's going to save me, he said. I ain't leaving. God's going to save me. So he stayed in his house and the water came up to the first level. So he said, no problem. I'll go up to the top level. Meanwhile, everybody left. And when he got to the second level, a boat came around and said, hey, buddy, we got to go. You had your chance, but I'm, going, I'm trying to help you out here. I got a boat. You want to go? Nope. God going to save me. The water rises up again, and he climbs to the top of the roof of his house. And an airplane come, right? A little helicopter. <laughs> says, hey, buddy, you got to get out of here. Come with us. I'm trying to save you. He said, nope. God going to save me. You know what happened? That water went right over the top of his house and drowned that sucker. And when he got to heaven and he asked God, he said, God, why you didn't save me? He said, look, I tried to save you when the water was low and I told you, let's go. I tried to save you when I sent the dude with the boat and you didn't go. I tried to save you when the helicopter came and you were on top of the roof and you didn't listen. So it's the same with you and the same with many of our situations. We got to open our eyes when God is showing us the gate. He's showing you the door. He's showing you, hey, let's go. And if you don't go because you're holding on to your imagination. See, that man was, was he was holding on to his imagination about God. He had an imagination that God was going to come down like and swoop him up or something. I don't know what the hell, you know, I, I don't know what kind of story that is, if it's a true story or not. But he, this guy must have thought like God was going to come down on a cloud. <laughs> And, and carry him away or something like that. A lot of times we don't take opportunities that God presents us because we're living in a cloud. We're thinking that, oh, well, something else is going to happen or something else I should be doing when it's like, no, look, here's the lifeboat right here. I'm giving you the lifeboat right now. You need a lifeboat. And I think you're given an opportunity for that lifeboat. Don't worry about uh, what's going to happen three months from now, three months from now. Yeah. Maybe you could, maybe you have another, maybe God will open up another door for you. Maybe you have, you'll be so booked out with gigging because people were so tired of COVID that now they just want to be out places all the time and they're giving big tips. You don't have to work three months from now. You don't know what's going to happen three months from now. So take what's in front of you as it's being offered to you right here, right now. And that's my opinion on that dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. And if you wanna join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.